The Human Genome Project by kscience.com. In 1990, the Human Genome Project started. And by 2003, they had sequenced the entire human genome. So they had sequenced the A's, the T's, the G's and the C's of the human genome. And they had identified the locations of over 20,000 genes and located and identified over 1,000 genes that were linked to genetic diseases. So we now know where genes are on which chromosomes. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to look at how the Human Genome Project can benefit people with genetic disorders. So this here is a granny and a grandpa. This granny and grandpa have three daughters. Their first child has two children, a daughter and a son. Their second daughter has one child, a son. Their third daughter has three children, two daughters and one son. The granny has a mutation on the BRCA1 gene, which means she has a increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer, but she doesn't know she has a mutation on the BRCA1 gene. And the grandpa has a non-mutated BRCA gene, so it's a normal gene. To make it easier, I'm going to say that the mutated BRCA gene is having the BRCA gene, and having the non-mutated BRCA gene is having no BRCA gene, just to keep the terminology simple. So the granny is Big B, and the grandpa is little b. So the first daughter inherits the big B BRCA gene from mum and not the small b no BRCA gene from dad. And her partner has no BRCA gene. And neither of their children inherit the BRCA gene from their mum. They both inherit the non-mutated gene from their father. This daughter inherits the non-mutated gene from the grandpa, which means that no one in that family has the BRCA gene. Their third daughter inherits the BRCA gene from grandma, and her partner doesn't have the BRCA gene. And all three of their children inherit the BRCA gene from their mum, not the non mutated gene from their dad. So many years ago, the grandma died from breast cancer, but this was before genetic screening could take place. During her lifetime, this daughter doesn't get cancer. This daughter she smokes a lot and she gets lung cancer. She doesn't get a cancer connected to the BRCA gene, but she survives. So a third daughter, she gets breast cancer, but she survives. And her daughter goes on to develop breast cancer. So because we've sequenced the human genome due to the Human Genome Project, we know that some cancers are caused by faulty genes, like the BRCA1 gene, that can be passed on to the offspring. So because there's a lot of cancer in the family, the doctors advise that she gets genetically screened, tested to see if she's got a gene mutation connected to an increased risk of cancer. The doctors advise that she gets genetically screened. So the Human Genome Project, they said that the non 40 allele that is represented by little b is AAT, GCTA, CTG, TAT. And they've identified a 40 BRCA1 allele, which is the big B. And that's T, G, G, C, T, A, G, T, A, T, T, G, C. So as you can see, a 40 gene requires there to be a change in the base sequence. So the 40 BRCA1 allele has a mutated DNA sequence, a change in the DNA sequence. So this 40 BRCA1 allele is different from the non 40 allele that is linked to increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer in women. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So, this gene is found in the genome of this woman after she had genetic screening. 
So they know, and we know that the BRCA gene is inherited. So the doctor will now advise every blood relative to get tested for the BRCA gene. So they're all going to get genetic screening. And all of them are tested for the gene. If the grandma was alive, she would have got tested as well. But because she died from breast cancer, she's obviously not going to get genetically screened. And if you want to be really thorough, you test everybody. But that's not needed, just the blood relatives from the grandma. So these two wouldn't be genetically screened for the BRCA gene. So every blood relative gets genetically screened for the faulty BRCA1 allele. And this red circle represents all of the positive faulty BRCA1 alleles. So all of these people are carrying the faulty BRCA1 allele. They have an increased risk of developing breast cancer or ovarian cancer if they're a female. And there's a 50% chance that they can pass this faulty BRCA1 allele on to their children. So now they've all been diagnosed with the faulty BRCA1 allele. The doctors are going to advise them on precautions to take so they can reduce the risk of developing cancer. So they're advised on the best diet and lifestyle. It's really important to keep healthy at this point, to quit smoking. Catching cancer early makes it more easily treatable. So all of these people with the faulty BRCA1 allele will get regular scans to check for cancer, to check for cancer early so it becomes treatable. So all of these people with the faulty BRCA1 allele will get regular scans to check for cancer. If it's caught early, it is treatable. The women might want a mastectomy, which is the removal of both the breasts and potentially a removal of the ovaries. This will reduce the chance of getting breast cancer and ovarian cancer. This is a big decision to take. So if we know the alleles of someone, we can use special drugs that are more specific and effective due to the allele someone has. So we can use targeted drugs that are more effective due to the allele someone has. This woman here wants to have children, but she doesn't want to pass on her BRCA gene to her offspring. So she can be offered embryo screening. So if someone is offered embryo screening, they can screen the embryo for the faulty genes. So they can make sure that the embryo inherits the chromosome from the parent who doesn't have the BRCA gene. Therefore, the offspring will not have the BRCA gene. Therefore, the offspring will not have the BRCA gene. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just re-watch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes.